what makes you feel or say that the leaves are fluttering and there must be some breeze coming in. Say I have told the word breeze, B-R-E-E-Z-E, -E, breeze, which is a welcoming aspect for us because we all enjoy the cool breeze of a hot summer evening or a prior to rainy day. So that means what we cannot see is what we can feel. That is, air we cannot see, but we can feel the presence of air. We can feel the cloths fluttering. We can see the leaves moving. We can feel the wonderful breeze touching our receptors of the skin and finally giving us a comfort of a wonderful time. So, if I say what makes the air move, then you shall come up with very, very big answers. But before going into that, let us first discuss a very short point on what exactly the concept of wind is. Wind is the movement of air. When air moves, it is called wind. In reality, the heating up of air and the formation of water vapor is what there we can experience the changes around us. The physical changes, the changes in our environment is all because of these two reasons, heating of air and formation of water vapor. Heating of air and formation of water vapor are the two reasons because of which we can feel the changes in our environmental conditions. Why so? Heating of air causes the air to move, that is ultimately resulting in wind. And formation of water vapor causes rain. Formation of water vapor causes rain. So ultimately, these two concepts are very important for our environmental changes to occur. Now, let us say what are the factors that are responsible for the movement of air that is constituting the wind. The most important factor is convection current sets up the air. Indeed, say the radiations and re-radiations from the earth's surface are being absorbed by the atmosphere. Definitely, the air in the atmosphere gets heated up and this heating up of the air causes wind that is movement. And this wind is important with the perspective of the different types of changes that we are encountering in our environment. Now coming to the portion, imagine a coastal area, okay, a coastal area where you can have land as well as adjoining water. Just see and imagine. As we have done in the previous experiment of three beakers, we have seen that before water, the soil or the sand are gaining more temperature that is getting heated. Similarly, during daytime, when there is sun and solar energy is coming to the land, the first step that will occur is land breeze will get heated up. This is land. There is air above it. The presence or perforations of the solar energy is causing this land breeze to get heated up. And when it is getting heated up, it will get rised up, which we will see in tomorrow's experiment. It will get rised up. And after it is getting risen up, there is formation of low pressure because there is vacancy in that place. See, this was the land. Here I was having the air. So, after it is getting heated up, it is rising. So, this portion is having a gap and that gap is causing low pressure. Am I clear? This low pressure cannot remain as it is because nature cannot have imbalance. So, immediately the sea breeze will fill up this low pressure area. The sea breeze will get risen up because it is also gaining some solar energy. But the rising up of sea breeze is after the rising up of land breeze. Why? Because sea breeze is getting heated up after 
the land breeze. So the sea breeze which is rising up after getting heated will now feel this low pressure area. And definitely you can say that the movement of the air is from the sea to that of the land during daytime. From sea to land. Let me again explain you in a nutshell. It's a daytime, solar energy is there, it is reaching up to the land. When it is reaching up to the land, it is immediately heating up the air above the land. Because in our previous experiment, we have seen that the sand or soil is getting heated up faster than that of the water due to their intermolecular orientations. So, the land is getting heated up, the land breeze is getting heated up and it is getting risen. After it is getting risen, there is formation of low pressure area in the vacant position. Now, the sea breeze which is correspondingly getting heated up by the solar energy will now rise and enter into this low pressure area and finally the movement of air will occur that is wind will flow from sea to that of land which I have already mentioned from sea to land. Say the night time. Say the night time this is land and again this is sea. What happens is since it gets heated up later, it gets cooled up slower. What happens is there is no sun. Now we have moon. There is no solar energy. Now the heat that has been absorbed by the land as well as the sea, that is the elements of lithosphere and the elements of hydrosphere will not have the similar rate of cooling. The sea or the water will cool slower. Why it will cool slower? Because it is absorbing more heat in due course of time. Since it is getting more slow, it is getting more slower cooling as compared to that of land, the heated sea breeze rises up. Why it is getting risen up? Because it is getting cooling slower. When it is getting slower cooling, that means it is warm. And it will follow the same principle. When the land breeze was heated up, it was rising up. So now sea breeze is heated up and it is rising up. Why it is heated up or how it is heated up? It is heated up because it is not getting cooling faster than that of land. Let me be very clear again. The land is getting cooler faster than that of the water. Say how? Because the intermolecular orientation of the land and water is different. So the land will re-radiate the heat faster than that of the water. So now if a body is cooling slower, that means it is retaining heat for a longer period of time. Since the sea has heat in it for a more longer period of time, the sea breeze is getting warmed up. The sea breeze is getting warmed up means it is getting risen up similar to that of the daytime. Now since it is getting risen up, there will be creation of low pressure and now the land breeze will go to the area of that vacant position. So can I not say that during night the movement of air is from land to sea that is what wind is flowing from land to sea. In a nutshell I am revising once again during daytime land is getting solar energy, water is getting solar energy, land is getting heated up faster than that of water. When it is getting heated up faster, the air is getting risen up, there is formation of low pressure, the sea breeze comes to the land and fills that place. So during day, movement of air is from sea to land. During night, the water is getting cooler slowly, that means it is having heat for a longer time, it is getting risen up, formation of low pressure from land to sea now there will be movement of air that is wind is flowing from land to sea and that is what causing this convection current and that is setting up the air that is wind the convection current what is this convection current that is the solar energy is setting up the air and this solar energy is not solely doing this work it is associating itself with that of the pressure and the process of heating because convection is that process where there is transfer of heat from one body to another body without any physical touch. 
means there will be transfer of heat energy from say me to you but there will be no touch in between similarly sun is transferring the energy to that of the land and water and creating up the low pressure area accordingly there are two more factors that is responsible for the wind to flow one factor is rotation of earth around its axis the rotation of the earth is responsible for setting the air and making the wind move and also the high altitude say how when you have a high altitude mountain the movement of air is getting stopped or there is an obstacle there is a hindrance in the path of the movement of the air so there is no steady flow since there is no steady flow the pace of air or the speed with which the air was moving will sl become slower when it is getting striked with that of any mountain or hill ranges Am I clear? So three factor is responsible for setting the wind. One is convection current, another one is high altitude and another one is rotation of earth around its own axis. So this is all about the concept of wind.